we can get started right at six. Excellent. So I'm going to call us to order right at six. And we have Chris taking our minutes. So we're all set on that. All right. Is there any public comment at this time? If you want to raise your virtual hand, uh, I can see everybody on one screen right now. Okay. Seeing any hands. Oh, Nancy. Hi, thanks. Um, I just have a couple of questions or comments. Um, I imagine er everyone has read the um, piece that Caleb Elder wrote in a recent Addison Independent, which was largely about how how dramatically things have changed, um, how, how the situation has changed, how legislation has changed things um, over the past six, eight months. And um, in view of that and thinking about that, um, one of the things I was imagining that I hope is true is that um, Nate Levinson's recommendation uh, that we're expecting will be ready in December will be a staged approach that takes into account the changes and the changing assumptions um, as he recommended in his April presentation to the board. And um, so I'm wondering if there's anything in his proposal or his answers to the board's questions that indicate that it would be um, sort of a staged approach based on different scenarios of how some of those some factors may or may not change so that's one of my questions and the other um the other question i have partly in light of caleb's article his op-ed piece is um i mean it's it's great to have dave giving a rundown about what the legislation has turned out to be but I'm wondering um, how the board might be more intentional about communicating with key members of the legislature in the coming session in relation to the challenges that our school district is facing. Thank you. I just do wanna make one clarifying point. Nate has been pretty clear in, in his proposal that he is not making a recommendation. Um, there will be no recommendation from Nate. So you're expecting a report. So what Nate's going to do is gather the the authors and and their work and work with them and work with our work with getting feedback from the community and get them sort of on a level playing field so that they're exp they're in a format or in a way that the board can look at them across apples to apples and make study the information in a way that's easy to understand and that is the same for all of them but nate has been very clear that he is not making a recommendation okay well then i guess my question is in light of the way things have changed and uh, i'm sure we'll be changing in the next couple of years is it the board will it be the board's intention to create um, multiple scenarios and a staged approach to um, a solution. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down, and I think that is gonna evolve as we get through this work. Thank you. Thank you. Any other community members? Okay, Dave, I'll go to you. Oh, you still. Thanks. Me? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so. Uh, when I was a legislator, uh, I was never invited to a school board meeting. And um, I think that was a mistake. And I, I didn't take it in my own initiative to ask to attend a school board meeting, although I did attend as a community member a couple of times. But um, I think it would be really helpful, especially considering the massive changes over the last two years in education that we invite uh, our legislators to um, a meeting, maybe all four of them at the same meeting, maybe spaced out depending on on what the people setting the agenda believe. But I think it, it would be good to have uh, more direct communication with our legislators. 
Thank you. And I see Coco. Thanks, Don. Um, I missed the beginning of Nancy's comment, but I was just wondering if there would be an update on the relationship of the merger study committee to the proposal process and how those relate. I don't know if she had already asked that question. Um, I know it was something you were working on putting together to answer those questions. I'm just curious if that um, would be available. I didn't see it in the agenda tonight. And then Dave, I, I really appreciate your point about getting legislators um, you know, more involved in, in what's going on across the state. Uh, something that I've been thinking about and, and working with some community members on is to bring legislators to our schools for community meetings in August. Um, it's a great time for legislators. They've had a little break over the summer. The session has ended. They are gearing up for the start of the next legislative session and thinking about what their agendas and goals will be. And I think it could be a great opportunity to go further than just our four representatives, um, but think about folks across the state that could have an impact on what happens at the legislative level. So I will keep plugging away on that with some community members and we'll share updates as, as they come. Okay, thank you. And Brad. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, obviously speaking on, as a community member, I, I've been listening, you know, pretty religiously to um, the governor's now weekly uh, press conferences, and I was struck today and kind of suffered through the whole thing by how how tuned in he is and his administration to you know, sort of attracting. Um, folks to Vermont and he tied it explicitly today uh, not only to so you know the vaccine and 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 and, and covid um, and and you know setting Vermont as a national example of a, a state that is concerned about the health of and, you know, and well-being of its citizens but also such other other things such as um, the um, you know the this, this proposal by Apple wallet to partner with Vermont and other states to, um, you know, create a you know sort of environment, including a financial environment for folks who are of a different generation, certainly than I am, um, you know, to you know find Vermont as as a, as, a, as an inter, as, a, as a you know sort of a um, you know a, a good place to you know you know put down roots. And so I was wanting to kind of follow up on Dave's point, which I think I, I think is great. Um, would there be some opportunities, and I, and I don't know, I don't profess to know the answer to this, but would there be some opportunities to engage not, not just with legislators, but also with um, people in the, you know, Vermont Economic Development, you know, the, in the governor's office to engage sort of more proactively and more directly with, you know, bodies like ours at the, in, in the, uh, as, 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 you know, overseeing, uh, you know, school functions, because, as we all know, you know, one of the main drivers of the, the the problem we face is 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 a you know a dearth of economic development. So I just sort of add that as a again as a community member. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing any more hands. I'll keep moving along. Uh, we don't have anything with included in our consent agenda, so we don't have anything to do for that. So we'll. Just keep moving on. Uh, our first item of business is an action item about whether or not to hear the proposal presentations from community members before any process uh, to create a common format for comparison. So part discussion, part action. Um, I make a motion to consider whether to hear proposals. Okay. I'll second. Andrew. Okay. Discussion, Krista. Thanks, Don. I was just wondering if I can't recall if this board has the context for the request, if we talked about it as a full board or in the community engagement committee meeting, or maybe we talked about it in both. Um, but 
but I wonder if it would be helpful to just provide a little bit of context why about why the item is on the agenda. Sure. So it did. I, I believe it did come up in both, but it was mentioned at our last meeting, uh, our regular meeting, that there was some board board interest from a few members about hearing the proposals, and we really haven't had a chance to talk about it um, because we've been trying to figure out, you know, what what questions we had for Nate and those kind of things. So this is just an opportunity for us to discuss and sort of decide, do we want to hear them now? Do we want to wait? Do we, you know, where, where do we want to go with this? Brad? <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I would think that, um, you know, given Nancy's comments earlier, that uh, if we have some sort of a presentation by the various proposal, folks, um, it would give them an opportunity maybe to provide some nuance and some update to, you know, what they have put down in, 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 in writing. I, I would support that. Kevin? I have, I have mixed feelings about this. Um, I think going back to some things that Nate had said through his proposal process is he wanted to have the opportunity to talk to these people, presumably even outside of a public forum so that he could have a um, genuine conversation with them and help them work their proposal or see through some weak points, if you will. Um, and I'm not sure, given that, what the advantage is for the school board to hear the raw proposals, if you will, before that process takes place. And if the school board gets into a situation where they're influencing those proposals prior to Nate working with these people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, it, it could, it could um, <clears throat> influence the different proposal proposers uh, not necessarily in a positive way. They may have some pre preconceived notions about what the school board is gonna think before they talk to me. And, and uh, that in particular, I don't think would be positive. Um, all said, I don't, I don't know if it's, I'm hard one way or the other, but to me, it's almost like a waste of time for both the proposers and the board to start kicking the tires before Nate does his work. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm not sure, Andrew, I'll go with you, Andrew, and then Steve. Yeah, so I'm trying to remember the sort of discussion about it previously, but I think I prefer to skip that step because of the timeline Nate has given us. It's not that we're not wanting to hear hear it, but that we wanted a, a framework to understand it uh, via his work. So I think I, I sort of agree with Kevin, and unless I hear something strongly in favor of hearing proposals ahead of time. And Steve. Uh, so I was, I had to skip out of the last meeting, Don. Did we, did we sign Nate up officially last time? Yes, we did. Yeah, so my sense is, uh, is behind Kevin and, and Andrew's points here that we've signed Nate up for a process. He he knows how he wants to take this down the road. And I think that question really ought to be answered more directly by him. Um, see how he feels about it. My sense is that he's going to want to, uh, you know, have his ability to talk with these folks directly and and maybe um, level out their pros, you know, their pluses and minuses before we hear something officially. So I would also be in favor of waiting for how Nate wants to move forward with this. Okay. All right. How about a board? Some board members we haven't heard from. Sandy. Thanks, Don. Um, we had a chance to also talk about this um, at length during our community engagement committee because we were also looking from the perspective of allowing a broader community um, 
engagement to know what the proposals are as well, and not just as a proposal to have the people who proposed it to do it for the board. Um, you know, I, interestingly, I have mixed feelings as well, um, only from the perspective of when I look at the, the plan or proposal that uh, Nate Levinson made, you know, um, I could see one view, are we putting the cart before the horse? Do we want to give, you know, community pro proposals an opportunity to get a sense of maybe even numbers or more detail or what they're looking at based on their proposals and to rethink and if they wanted to repurpose or rethink how they wanted to go forward, you give them that opportunity before, you know, just putting it out there. But um, at the same time, um, what came to mind for me just in listening to the other uh, ideas was that maybe that we should reach out to the community, the people who've made these proposals and say, um, do you have a preference? You know, given sort of the, the, the general outline that we've gotten from Nate Levinson that we approved and clearly we're gonna get more detail as we work with him, you know, what would their preference be? Would they like to be able to um, give a presentation to the board knowing that they'll be, you know, working with Nate and then, you know, come back. So since they put so much work into it, the people who actually did these proposals, maybe get their input. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Um, about Sarah or, oh, Dave, he's got it. Um, so uh, I, listening to Kevin, I, I'm, more concerned that um, that board members will uh, take a, a preemptive attitude about um, a one proposal or the other that's incomplete um, and can be improved with uh, Nate's work. Um, then I am uh, worried about. I think more information in general. I think more information is better than less information and if community members make their presentation to the board and get uh, sort of feedback from board members about um, where they see problems or where they see opportunities, maybe that leads them to improve their, um, their work with uh, Nate Levinson and say to Nate, well, you know, I heard this at the board meeting, is this something we should work on to improve our project. So I, I, I think it improves the process overall. Um, I, I do, uh, I am concerned about um, uh, well, I already said that, so I, I won't say it again, but I, I think more information is better than less. Okay, thank you. Annie, Denny? I was just going to say that I really loved um, Sandy's idea. Um, I, I had been thinking kind of the same thing, and I wasn't sure if that was something we could do or if that was even a possibility. But um, I like the idea of getting some input from the community members and, and, and getting feedback and asking them what they want us to do. All right. Thank you. Um, Sarah LaPearl, how about you? Um, I feel like my voice isn't going to be that original. I don't, I kind of agree with pretty much everybody that I have mixed feelings about it. And I, I do want to honor their work and their voice. Um, but I really want to honor the process a lot. And I don't know that, um, sharing it with me and a few other people and obviously me and the board and a few other people is necessarily going to be as helpful now as it would be later i don't know okay all right and krista looks like you're the last one i see maybe i have maybe there's another page <laughs> i think liz is here Oh, oh, and here Kristen, is. so feel free to call on them first if you'd like. Uh, Liz? Oh, there she is. I, I don't 
No, what what I what I know about this is that I um, would like to have a way to present it. The, what I think the best idea that I heard that that the community engagement was talking about was the idea of getting all the proposals some sort of presentation done on video, like just a meeting where that's all done and then the community can go see them and then write comments and kind of have a back and forth discussion under a, um, on, a on some sort of web page. Or, so what I think the most important thing to me is that we have a way to share them out. Um, and I, that, that was all, thanks. And Kristen Blanchett. Yeah, can you hear me? No. <laughs> we can't hear you. You sound like you're on a spaceship. Yeah. Um, oh, there you are. Are you there? I don't, are you there, Kristen? Uh, Krista, let's go ahead and we'll see if she comes back. Okay, sure. So yeah, I think my, one of the original concerns I had about not hearing the proposals from the proposers was that it isn't in a proposal to us. There's a lot of proposals in that sentence, sorry. Um, so what Nate laid out as a process for us does not include the opportunity currently for the board or the community to hear the proposals. And so um, I think that's what was concerning me. But as I think about what is most helpful to the board, I think there is some value in having, you know, what one of the things I could think I think he could be really helpful with is um, providing a way for those different proposals to be presented to us so we can really make some genuine comparisons or evaluations. And I think the same would probably be this, the case for the community. So uh, if, if we agreed that there's some good work there that could happen from Nate, but that then we would ask to have the opportunity to hear and gather input on those proposals after that point, I think I would feel comfortable with waiting. Um, the other thing that I had a little bit of a hard time with was just sort of knowing they're out there and that um, I know there be, they have been discussed at a Lincoln Select Board meeting and um, I just was feeling like, oh, is there a void that is being filled because we're not filling it. But as I thought more about it, I thought, well, you know, it is on the website, folks can read them, they can attend different meetings that others might be hosting about them. But that what is probably most valuable for us is to have a really clear way to distill the information that's being prevented, presented. So, um, so I guess to summarize, I'm saying that if we can ask of Nate to provide an opportunity for us to engage more with these after he's had a chance to work with these folks, then I'm in support of waiting. And then uh, just the other thing I wanna say is I think we should remember that he is, has some really great experience, but he's also our, our um, you know, he, he's working for us. And so I think we can say, we really like your process, but we'd like you to add this or that. Um, if he thinks that's not going to work and he can give us really good reasons why, then that's great. But I don't think we should be afraid to ask him to make adjustments um, if they're important to us. So, okay. Let me just see. Kristen Blanchett, are you back? Hi, Don. There you are. Don, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, you, you, I'm driving home from work and you, you did me right when I was at a... Uh, a dead zone, of course. So um, not your fault, this is what always happens. So um, I agree with Krista, I would rather see them after they're polished. 
because I think it will just slow down the process. And um, I think we have to watch out. I think we exactly what Krista said, how can tell Nate what we want. He's our employee, uh, but we, we shouldn't micromanage. And I don't know how we, we reach that sweet spot, but that, that's what I would recommend is um, seeing them after they're polished by that process. Okay, thank you. And then I see Brad has his hand up. <clears throat> yeah, sure, just yeah, briefly. I mean, I, I, I guess I could go either way. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to what Crystal was saying. And, um, and, and in terms of the process, I mean, I, I think we have to make sure that the process is, you know, gets done right. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that one of the things that one of the topics that has come up over the last, you know, couple of months that I've been involved is the issue of what, uh, the extent to which the, the board takes ownership of the process. Um, I just want to make sure that it's clear to everybody in the community that it's the board that's taking ownership of, 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 of this process and, and not some, uh, you know, not, you know, Nate's great, but, but, but not a, a, a hired gun. And so that's why I would, you know, I, again, I think uh, the more information we get up front as a board and get in front of the, the, the community, in front of the, the people who are presenting the proposals, the better. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Regarding the process, I recall the meeting that we had that we went over Nate's process, proposal that we discussed at length, the school board's roles and responsibilities to remain um, connected with this whole process. And I am under the recollection and part of the reason why I said what I said was that my assumption, and we should check with Nate in his proposal, that once he does his one-on-one, um, -on -one, if you will, um, and has worked with all the different proposers, the school board would end up having um, interaction with him and the proposers um, at, at some level. And even he may even mediate that. I don't know. I don't care. Um, but my assumption right now is after that discussion is there will be um, interaction with the proposers, proposers after Nate has his one-on-ones with them. Um, and if, if that somehow fell through the cracks and we should be um, looking at that again and making it a little bit more crisp. I, you know, I understand that we hired a consultant and, and uh, he should be doing what we're, we want him to do, but we also have to respect, we hired this guy for, or hire, we hire, when we hire a consultant, we're hiring for a certain amount of expertise and it may be something that we don't understand or not necessarily agree with, but we have to also give them some latitude to do their magic. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Sandy. Sorry, I lost my mouse there. Um, so, uh, you know, um, I have um, the 12 point proposal that Nate uh, sent to us on May 17th and it's really um, helpful, I think, to, to look at it because it reminds me of what I felt more strongly at the community engagement committee we had last week. And um, I'm, I'm, so the first four points, the fourth point I think really pulls together uh, why I think Nate should do work. I, I'm taking this more strong position that Nate should meet and do the work with the propo proposers, the, the proposals that have been made. And I and I think he says it pretty clearly. He says, with five options to compare and contrast, it can be confusing. We will reformat all five proposals into a standard format to ease understanding and simplify comparison. The reformatted proposals will be shared with all five authors to ensure that the summary is accurate. Once we are certain that the summaries reflect the originals, we will share the summaries with the school board. This will be a facilitated shared led by the reviewers. So that's point number four. And I think, because um, we always had this idea, we wanna make sure as a board member, I do, that I'm looking at things a little more like apples to apples instead of apples to oranges based on all the different proposals. And I'm hoping with, what I'm hoping is good work that's 
that was earlier in these points that are going to be done with the people, you know, the authors of the proposal. Um, I'm expecting that they will get a sense of this makes sense for us and how we want to propose it or not. And then once they've done that process that Nate has outlined, if the people, the authors of those proposals are not comfortable with what's happening, like the work they're doing with Nate, or if that should turn out to be the case, then I think we can as a board revisit and say, well, in the end, you know, the authors get to propose what they're most comfortable with. So I think that's what they're gonna work out. Like if they don't quite wanna go this way, they can always still have some control and have some say in how it's provided to the board. But um, like I said before, I feel like we're putting the cart before the horse uh, before letting these authors meet with Nate first, decide if they want to just keep it the way they originally did it, or if they want to reformat it. And then that way we as board members can really get into the meat, you know, of those, of those proposals or understand them. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Krista, did you, or is your hand down now? No. Okay. All right. Any other board members? Let me check the other page. Oh, Liz. Hi, um, I'm sorry to, I just don't know where this fits. I guess I'm just like, um, cause I'm looking at the, um, uh, so I, I, is this a, a time when we're talking about the proposals and when they might be going and how they might be working? Um, there was the proposal that was sent on the 20th, which is not the fourth. And I um, am just looking for us to maybe um, know whether or not that was gonna um, have an opportunity to be a part of the process and um, whether or not it was similar enough to be integrated or different enough to be considered or because it's past the date, it um, sets a bad precedent for restarting. I, I, I just, I, I don't know where that fits. And I just kind of wanted, um, some closure, I think, really on where where that goes if something else comes up, or are we really planning on saying, "Hey, look at these things. Where do they integrate?" Um, and then some some fresh ideas from there, because because again, I don't see any any just being like I don't know. I, I are there any thoughts on that, or is that something that just still so I can tell you that's one of the questions that Nate is going to provide more information. He didn't want to do it in an email and he didn't spell out a lot of details, but he did say there's, there, there's no bad time for a good idea, I think is how he said it. And so there are ways to look at that without, you know, to, if somebody came up with something to look at what, is being done and I think he'll have the ability to look at that is sort of what I was getting from his response. Um, so again, I, I need to get more information from Nate to answer that question. I did present that, but I just don't have the complete answer because he wants to have the, a face-to-face -face conversation to give those answers. Right. I'm not seeing any other board members. So Krista made a motion to consider hearing the proposals. Would you, are you at a place where you're ready to vote or do you feel like there's something you haven't said or something that needs to be said? Todd, can I ask a question? Sure. Kristen, so is that to hear the proposals before they're polished up or after? What are we voting on? I don't understand. Yeah, I was actually wondering if I should clarify to modify the motion a little bit. Um, I don't know if I can do that in a friendly manner. Sure. <laughs> um, but just because then we're not voting on a negative, we're voting on a <laughs> positive. So, I mean, could we say um, we, the, the motion is to, You want to just like it's, it's to postpone the, hearing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sandy. If you've got one, you go, girl. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. The way it's written in the agenda, the whole way it's written, is that the. But it says whether or not, and so. So, so we could just say whether to. Here we go. 
like and just and then to hear proposal presentations from community members before any process to create a common format for comparison. Would, would that be a friendly amendment? <laughs> Is that the gist of what you were trying to get to, Krista? I think so. I mean, I was just wondering if we should flip it to say, um, so, so we're all going, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm fine with that. Okay, and Andrew, you second, are you, are you in agreement with that <laughs> Mod modification on it? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so for clarity, so, that's it. Kristen? Yeah, I, so yeah, it's clarified, but I still don't understand if we're voting on, we're gonna see them before the polishing happens or after. So the motion would now, now be whether to hear the proposal presentations from community members before any process to create a common format for comparison. So that would be before they're polished. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, so I guess we'll use the, the roll call on this one. So um, whether to hear the proposal presentations from community members before any process to create a common format for comparison. And I will start with Krista. No. You're opposed. Sandy. She mouthed no. Oh. Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, Kristen Blanchett. No. Dave Sharp. Oops, you're muted again. Uh, no. Okay, Kevin. No. Okay, Steve Rooney. No. Oops, I'm sorry, I missed that, Steve. Uh, no. Okay. Brad? Yeah, I think on, on the board ownership issue alone, I, I, I vote yes. Okay. Andrew? No. Liz? Oops, didn't hear you. Not at this time, no. No? Is that correct? Uh, no. No. Okay. no. Not at this time. All right, Sandy. I think you got me already. Oh, I'm sorry. Done. Sarah right LaPearl, sorry. <laughs> Two SLs. Sarah LaPearl, yeah. sorry. No. No. All right. Annie Denny. No. Okay, so that brings us three, six. 10, 10 are opposed to hearing them before the, a common format for comparison and one was in favor. So that one, we, we will, it sounds like we're gonna hear them after they're polished. All right. Okay. Next is an update from the Community Engagement Committee. Krista, I'll let you handle that. Sure. Um, sorry, I don't have anything in advance. Um, so just briefly, we talked about a variety of different topics. Um, the most actionable item right now is that we are using what Don created to respond to public comment at the last board meeting to be the format for our next column that's going to go in the Addison Independent, which should be in the paper a week from Thursday. And um, the topics that are included there came up during our committee meeting and they were um, the ESSER fund allocations thus far. So ESSER one and ESSER two, how has that money been spent? Um, what do we know thus far about the merger study committee? And um, the work with Nate Levinson. So that content was already in great shape and we're going to be making some minor adjustments to it, but it should be ready to go for that column, uh, for that paper. 
Um, we did talk a little bit about, and Floyd was good enough to join us and um, try to answer some of our questions about the um, role of input, community input in the ESSER III um, funding process. And it sounds like that's still a bit of a moving target and that um, it might likely happen over the summer that input can be obtained so that it's in time to inform how those monies are spent. So we didn't really decide what recommendations we might wanna to make to the board about what that should look like. So we're sort of waiting to hear more. And um, yeah, I think those were the, the big takeaways. Um, anybody else that was there from the board that wanted to chime in, feel free. Oh, and the, the, sorry, one more thing that um, we, we, st we still have questions about where the opportunities will be for community input into in this process with Nate. So um, those question, questions are still unanswered at this point. Steve? Yeah, so I was just going back through and reading Nate's proposal, and after after they after he theoretically standardizes the presentations for everyone, then they're going to be shared with the board. I think that how that sharing happens might be what we're all talking about tonight in terms of an action to happen afterwards. But then after that, he says form a community input committee. So that's ten or twenty members of a committee formed by the school board. I would think that's part of what Kristen is curious about. Krista is curious about it now. It is, but just to clarify that committee that Nate is recommending be formed is around developing evaluation criteria. It isn't around providing input on the proposals. So I think somebody, maybe it was Liz mentioned this idea some folks had about an interactive way, perhaps on the website for community members to provide feedback on the proposals once they're in a digestible format. That's just one idea. But I think the question that's out there is in what way, so it, so the board will have an opportunity to engage with the proposals after they're in a set format, um, but it's not clear in what ways the community will be able to engage with them. I, yeah, I get it. Thank you. Kevin. Well, I hear I hear the question, Krista, but um, is that something beyond the scope of what we're asking Nate to do? Um, I mean, he's going to come up. He's going to come up with this group of um, community members to come up with requirements and, and shape what the values are, and he's gonna come up with um, a system of evaluating the proposals that will make it easy to understand the pluses and minuses of all the proposals. But I'm, I'm not convinced that he's going to, or is intending, or we asked him to do anything for community engagement beyond that. And it may very well be something that we need to chart. I could. Um, did I talk? I see Liz and then Sandy. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, I think I think I agree. I think what we need though is is we need that timeline, right? So if we know when the criteria will be done and we know um, when we're gonna get the proposal, because the hard thing is was I believe wanting to be able to tell people, hey, this fall we're gonna run a certain number of engagements in every town and kind of, I mean, for me, it's just learning from Sue. Um, so if we had a timeline, then we can start to develop those specific dates and let it be known way far ahead of time for everyone to participate. So I think we could do it or I think he could do it. But if we know when and what we'll have to share and talk about, then I think that that we could we could do a lot more. Okay, and Chris, uh, Sandy and then Krista. Thanks. 
you know, Kevin, that was something we had talked about during the community engagement committee. And then when I think, I think if I'm correct, Krista, when she mentioned asking questions of Nate, it was really again about when there are benchmark times so that we as the community engagement committee can do our work. I agree with you, it's our work as part of the board and for us to make the committee to make suggestions to the board on how we can dovetail our connection and linkage to the community, to the process that Nate's doing. So it was really more about getting, once we understand more the timing of the process and, and how it's gonna happen, how we can then add to that and do that, do that our board work. I would agree, I, I think it, it, I think that's the question. We still have our own board work we can do um, together. Krista. Yes, I think we have some good capacity and some great experience from the past to build on um, as a board and through the community engagement committee. So I think we're, we're ready to do that work. I think I had asked at our last meeting for um, the question to be conveyed to Nate about, you know, where he sees that role or work happening, you know, and, and maybe, you know, just maybe the board needs to just say clearly, yep, we think there's a role for that and go ahead and make some recommendations, community engagement committee on what that could look like and where that fits in. But I think we were just hoping for a little more, you know, like Liz said, of a timeline and a sense of whether that does fit in and, and, and when, and then we'd be ready to make some plans. Liz, is your hand back up? Oh, and Kevin, is your hand back up? Okay. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm probably running around circles and with assumptions and everything, but, you know, and when I said, when I sort of said that, and, and I didn't really think, think too much about the timing, because I think there's some meshing in a t and there's a pass off, because once he gets to the point that he has developed the criteria, he's um you know done an analysis of the proposals that that's all towards the end of his work and um unless we extend that work for some reason i'm not exactly sure why but you know we we start meshing and taking a hand off there and i mean obviously he needs to be involved in that and under so we understand exactly what that is but you know we're we're at the the communication part that you're concerned about, Krista, is at the tail end. There starts revving up at the tail end, and then once, it, and then it's almost independent of his finalization. There's a, except for you know some sort of, you know, level of handoff, and then you can almost springboard, based on the fact that he turns over a deliverable, being all these proposals on, on uh, analyzed, and then springboard from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you raise a good point, Kevin, that first off, we we can't have him contractually connected to us in perpetuity while we go out and seek the input we feel we need. Um, and also it may make sense to have that be once he has shared a recommendation and we have this package that we put forth to the community. So I appreciate that point. Any other questions around the community engagement committee? Steve. Well, I, I I agree with Kevin and I think it seems as though from what's going on at Montpelier that we have a little more time to allow that to happen after Nate is finished. Nate thought he was going to be done towards the end of 21. Um, you know, we get a recommendation packet from him with a clear analysis of all the options, and then we go out and talk to the community about it. Um, I don't think we're cutting ourselves short if we have to tack on some extra time up at the end of Nate's process. Okay. All right. Okay. Then we'll continue on. I guess our next item is the, an update on Nate Levinson. So board members know that I got some of the answers to your questions and I sent them off. I have uh, 
copied that email that every, all the board members got and asked Chris to include that in the meeting minutes so that the community can see it as well. But um, just a few minutes ago, you were talking about the communication piece and I, I did ask those questions to Nate and he did say he wants to speak in person, but I'll read one line of what he said. Um, actually, there's two sentences and I'll read what he said. Yes, communication is critical and I know that the board wants and should be involved, but at certain times, it's best if the board takes a back seat as well. We can decide the specifics during the kickoff call. Um, and the same with the question around the merger committee. He wants to speak to that one in person uh, about best how to coordinate the work. But he, his initial statement, I do think both efforts can and should take place in parallel. So, um, but more to come because he wants to talk in person. So those were just his sort of first thoughts. And then, um, again about Liz's comment about a proposal coming in late. He, he said, we definitely need to find some middle ground. You asked for proposals and had a deadline that said, we don't want to dismiss any good idea. A great idea a day late is still a great idea. Um, if it's truly different and has a real upside, we should consider it. If it's very similar to an existing option, we should see how it might be integrated. So I know I, I haven't provided a lot of specifics, I'm writing things down so that when there is this kickoff call that I can get more information so that I can share back with people continually as we go. Um, I think we're going to learn as we go as well. Liz, is that your hand? Thank you so much for doing that. It's a clear way to get the communication going among us and I'm excited that we're sharing it out. Um, and I just, uh, so I've been, I, I'm going to write a letter of interest to join the merger committee and I'm working on that. And um, so I've thought a lot about how these processes go together. I look forward to hearing what he says, but um, I almost feel like they couldn't happen separately because they affect each other, each other so deeply. And so many of the proposals involve our neighboring district that I think it would be inappropriate to not have a merger committee with them at this time. So um, I, I am I'm working on my interests, but that really had me thinking an awful lot about that. And, and um, I, I definitely feel it's appropriate at the same time, that's all. Thank you. Anyone else? Kevin. So um, you had mentioned a kickoff meeting, or um, I guess the question is, how does this all start? I'm hoping the kickoff meeting will be the start where um, we're going to meet and uh, get some more of these answers and get some more clarity on how we begin this work and move forward. Has that been that hasn't been scheduled or it has it? been scheduled. Nate's was unavailable this week. Otherwise, there was a chance we could have had some more answers this week, but it's now into next week, I believe. Yes, next week. When next week? Um, Tuesday? Tuesday of next week. That's the 15th? Yes. Sarah LaPearl? Are we, are we supposed to go to that <laughs> kickoff meeting? <laughs> is that an obvious question? I'm just checking. Uh, um, actually, this one is, he wanted just the points of connection. So this one, um, is myself and Patrick and Krista may join us. I'm not sure. We talked about it when we talked earlier this week. So that sounds great. Okay. All right. And if there's nothing else, we'll keep moving along. Um, board 
we, we added in the board retreat agenda item, um, partly because some of it involves um, going through Nate's book, that's part of it, but par also part of it, um, we had planned to go down a certain path, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get some of the, the presenters that we thought. So we're gonna sort of take a different tact, um, maybe look to get some board governance work and then um, instead of a live person, maybe use a webinar to, to give us some more information on a training that the VSBA put out. I'm drawing a blank if there was something else, Patrick or Krista, if you want to weigh in, is there something else I'm missing about the board retreat that we talked about? No, I think it was just a recognition that some of the trainings that we thought we'd be able to get support from the VSBA on um, really have become only webinars. So there weren't going to be opportunities to bring in those presenters for those trainings to our retreat. Um, and that sort of prompted that idea that you just brought up of some governance work, thinking about board superintendent relationship, et cetera. Um, and right. Yeah, we and talked then about looking at that one particular webinar around um, use of data. Right. And that was the Krista? Sorry, Patrick, to cut you off. That was the one I was going to mention because I think. Um, that although the VSBR can't be there to present or represent the workshop that they offered, I don't know, a month or so ago, um, we can view the recording and there's some really great info in there that I think will help us get a better handle on the data that is included in our ENDS report or evaluating whether that is enough or you know, just a better understanding on all that the state collects and we provide and what we as a board want. So I think that's a piece of the retreat. And then something else is just under that governance piece is finding ongoing ways for stakeholder participation in our work and also um, just board development. Right, that was the part I was, the, the just board group, group, developing that group relationship and conversations that we don't get to have at our regular meeting. Uh, I see Sarah's got her hand up. I'm gonna ask another simple question. Does a webinar mean that it is pre-recorded or is it with live people? No, I think it's pre-recorded. Okay, so can we ensure that we are in a location with good Wi-Fi? <laughs> yeah, okay. We're good. <laughs> um, and then the only other thing I thought of that I think we always come up uh, later on in the year is like some financial, I think a little more financial literacy work maybe, but I, I guess I would throw that in there. It's, it's probably part of the webinar, but I'm going to put that in. Okay. All right. Uh, Liz and then Sandy. I forgot to lower my hand, but I'm happy that um, it's called. Anyways, I was just thinking about how we we did have school choice on the agenda last summer, and we kind of ran out of time. And so I um, just I totally respect if that's not a topic that every you know if like as a group we don't decide that that's somewhere we want to go. Um, but if if that was somewhere we wanted to go, maybe we could have somebody speak about that a little bit. Um, okay, great. Uh, Sandy, and then Kevin and Dave. Great. Um, I like the idea of some more stuff on financial literacy. It's been a while since I've been on the board. So you do lose it. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do it all the time. And so and then also how that might tie into the, the proposal that the legislature that they're making and that's coming down the pipe and sort of kind of pulling them together in a more concrete way um, for just, you know, board members who are sort of new back to the process, that would be great. And then the other was on the uh, board governance process. I remember, I think 
one of the earliest board meetings, maybe March or April that I joined in. I can't remember if it was Dave Sharp who mentioned it, but there was um, a gentleman up maybe in the Heinsberg area who did a lot of board governance education. I, I might be remembering this wrong, but if we're looking for, you know, some maybe live presenters, maybe someone who also is familiar with board governance and has also more concrete examples of how it, it's worked in other school districts and how we can improve our process. Um, Kevin? A little embarrassed to ask this question, but um, I, if, if, do we have, it seems like we should be, we are supposed to be evaluating the ends policy, which I guess we do with Patrick's submittal as a as essentially a monitoring port, but I, I don't know, or it has escaped me that we actually take a look at the policy um, and see if it really says what we want it to do as a standalone policy, and if there's um, other things we should be considering. And I go, I keep going back to you know that's, and, and it's a broad based policy which is supposed to be, but it's a hail mary. You know, and uh, if, if with, within the brown dog thing, there was um, uh, one, of, one of the modules is about how to have subsets, if you will, so you can see if the needle's moving or not. We have no way of knowing if the needle's moving. And it seems like at some point we, and I don't know where the right time is to do it, but we should be looking at that ends policy and making it workable and not not going into a weeds data dive or anything to to make it workable but to me it's 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 overly ambiguous at the point that we're at right now okay all right dave um thanks kevin i completely agree with that uh concern uh, in particular um i've been thinking about um an article that was in vt digger on uh, an equity um, uh, report or analysis of equity in the Burlington School District uh, and inquired about such a report for our district and was told there was not, none. Uh, and that's concerning to me. Uh, you, you only improve stuff you measure. So if we're not measuring stuff, then we're not gonna improve it. And so that, concerns me. Um, and uh, I, I, uh, I would like a lot more clarity on the ends. Of course, my entire tenure on the board has been around COVID. So uh, it's understandable that, uh, that um, you know, we don't have much in the, re in the in, with regard to ends to, to analyze or talk about. Um, but uh, I need more. I need to see moving the needle. I need to see improvement. And um, and I haven't been able to do that as a board member. It's a bit frustrating. I wondered also, um, the module you're talking about, the webinar you're talking about, is that the one uh, done by Arizona around equity? Or was there a different um, webinar module that you were considering for the uh, um, retreat? I think the one, so I attended something um, a month or so ago that was that was looking at the platform that the state is using to collect and then share back out all of the data across a variety of areas for each school district. And so they walked us through those different modules and what they hope will be there. Some of it is incomplete because of COVID. Um, but I think it's a good education in the types of things that our school districts are being required to report on. So we can, are like better grounded just in what's already, you know, being reported. And then, you know, they talked a little bit about as a board, how you might choose to focus on one particular area. Oh, and I should say there's also, they, they have added an equity component to that reporting. And again, this is fairly new. So the data in there isn't that robust yet, but it still allows for really good conversations as a board around, you know, if you take one piece at a time and really look at, okay, well, what is this data that, that this dashboard holds? 
Does it meet what we're asking about? What local assessments do we do that might supplement that? It, it's kind of, it would, it would help me better understand the full picture so that when we get the ENDS report for our district, you know, we know where that is coming from. We can put it in context and we can decide if it's satisfactory or not. That's probably more than you wanted to know, Dave. <laughs> but I thought it was a good webinar. <laughs> Yes, I think it was a good webinar, and, and but it is sketchy and and early in its development. So, but uh, it'd be good to have a presentation on that. Steve. Well, while we're throwing the equity word around, the VSBA does have some dedicated resources to the equity on the equity front. We might spend a little bit of time reviewing those. I think. Right. Um, Sandy, is that your hand from before? Okay. And then Brad. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, um, if, since we're all coming out of COVID and we're tired of all the Zoom calls, whether it might be we might be able to do some of the um, WebEx or you know, webinar stuff up front and be able to spend more time in the short amount of time we have at the at the retreat to be able to talk to one another as opposed to you know, looking at screens. I mean, again, I'm not sure exactly how the, how the format is going to play out, but I would be in favor of doing a bit more preparation electronically, but then be able, be able to have enough time to talk to one another. All right, Kristen. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, if we're just looking at something, I mean, we can do that ahead of time and then discuss it. Um, that makes a lot of sense. All right. Okay. I think we will have to. Um, there's a couple of items. The ends. The ends policy review would be a. A good thing for all of us. So there may be maybe there if we look at that we can figure out a way to, have, integrate that into it. Um, and then I guess we'll reach reach out on a couple of other fronts and see if we can find people to help us with that and set the agenda by who we can get to help us in person. If that seems like a plan. And, you know, maybe we'll know something by our meeting on the 22nd and we can give a little, you know, information then. But it'll give us a place to, to begin again or dig back in. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think we're in need of an executive session today. Correct. All right. Um, back to public comment. Not seeing any public comment or any hands up. Um, Chris, do you have the board evaluation? tool open? You betcha. All right, so we'll move on to the board evaluation, the meeting evaluation. All right. What is the level of engagement of all board members, high or low? I'm gonna go with high. I see in thumbs. Yep. All right. Was the agenda followed? I'm gonna go with yes. Thumbs up. Anybody have any comments? It, this was really efficient and it only was an hour. Almost <laughs> makes me want to come back. I think that's a record. <laughs> Does the chair effectively establish the agenda and materials for distribution to the board, yes or no? Yes, any comments? Um, okay. Is the chair effective in fostering a professional culture regarding fair and open deliberation, full participation of all members and ensuring the integrity of the board process? Yes or no? Thank you. Any comments? 
I like when you do the roll call, Don, for important subjects. I think it works well. Oh, great. Thank you. Other feedback for the chair? What went well with the meeting? Out early? <laughs> I think that's the winning point there. <laughs> What suggestions do you have for ways to improve future meetings? If if I could say, if we're going to start, are we going to start, when are we going to start meeting in person? And if that's the case, if, if we could start having the meetings a little bit later, uh, like we used to do 630, I think. Okay. We, I think we're going to plan that our in-person meeting will be the retreat. That's when we'll start back to in-person. That's a wrap. All right, great. Is there a motion to adjourn at 7 11? Yes, I make that motion. Sarah LaPerle. Uh, second. And Krista. Krista seconds. All right. All those in favor of adjourning at 7 11, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Nice good night. job, Dave. Nice job. <laughs>